according to schedule, we got to start about 7. It's Saturday night, and we got to get all the fabulous out for the next children. Okay, uh, did somebody tell me something here about the baby? Is that what you did wrong? Did y'all hear? Okay. Folks, we're still wandering in. Uh, this is number three. We're on the storytelling night at one of the Coffin Grounds in downtown here. We have a really nice lineup. How do you do that? We're going to have to get one of the experts up here. I just talked. I don't understand. Let me test back there. Okay. I got it up. Hey. Got it? Okay. Folks are still wandering in, so you get a chance to get in by the final seat. We have a pretty good lineup in my own here. Lou Bowman, Steve Campbell, Layla Birch, Walker Birch. Don Brown, Steve Campbell. And the ones on the agenda, of course, it's open mic. Anybody wants to get up to Patty if they didn't talk about. Hardy, way back in the back. We're going to get up, tell a few jokes, a couple of lies. Uh, nothing like Greer, folks. You know that. You meet them everywhere you go or you know somebody. I'm going to tell you a little story while everybody's eating and getting warmed up. Uh, Kathy and I used to shag a little bit one time. So, uh, we have a pretty wide network of Shag friends. One night we were out shagging this couple that, that a lot of you know, uh, Jim and Donna May, many of y'all know them, Walter know them, Steve, all you guys know them, anyway, they're, they're, we know them through the Shag community. So, they come up to us one night, we're out dancing, hey, you know Yvonne Lynn? Like, yeah, no problem. We're right in a hurry, Panama City. At the second party down there. So, uh, they talked about her all night long. And she didn't have ladies, but she was out with a bunch of ladies there partying down in Panama City. And that's kind of odd, Panama City. We went down there one time, Kenny and I went over with Jim and Donna, a bunch of other folks, and all. Uh, we almost froze to death. It, it got down to about 25 degrees. We did not take one winter piece of clothing at all. We, we flew down on Thursday, I think. And Jim and Donna had already driven down, and we shared a condo. And they kept, everybody kept sending us pictures, and everybody was laying out by the pool on the beach, having a big time. Boy, we got down there, and the first night was really nice, and then a cold, cold wave came in, and we didn't have one long sleeve shirt and no jacket and nothing. So we had a miserable time. I walked through the Walmart store and got us the best jackets I could find, which in Panama City. They don't carry real heavy coats in Florida, but I'm not going back. That was a miserable experience. But I ran into his mom last night. She's up on the bus with her and Ray, and I uh, came to see her mom, and I told her about this event. And so they're here tonight. So Bob and Ray and Miss Lynn are sitting back there. Glad to have them with us. Okay, y'all. Uh, who wants to lead us thing off tonight? It's going to be a toss-up. 
couple of people have already told me no. So I know everybody don't want me to talk all night because I've already run out of stories. Eddie, you want to leave us off? Steve, one of you, somebody. Ronnie, Bruce. No, I'm good. All right, let's see. Somebody got a coin? You can toss it. See who's coming first. Hey. Hey, buddy. Give it back there. Okay. See some familiar places. Excuse me. Familiar people around right here tonight. Uh, I'm afraid we're allowing uh, some people other than uh, very high old is in. Forrest Jones, Jackie, O'Burn's High Boy, Taylor's Boy. What even the way happened then was it? Well, it's good to have you. <laughs> okay. Like to thank Lisa Hawkins, Lee, and we're getting this thing together. Lisa. Uh, it'd be nice if you came up really first and thank a couple of people while you're here, sweetie. Come on up. I wanted to thank especially Lisa Garland with Stompin' Browns for always offering her venue for us to do whatever we want to do. And she just said, we see you and Claudette and the crew just do what you need to do to make it fun. So y'all please give her a round of applause because this is her And tonight I want to tell you that we have a corporate sponsor too of them for tonight's event. And that's so that all the pictures will go on the rear today online. And that is run by Scott Stevens and Jim Thayer, who are both here tonight. We're really happy to have been here. So we appreciate y'all, Jim and Scott, very much. Bye. <laughs> two concerts are Charlie Norris, Victoria Oda-Provisley, and Stan Coster at Valley Hunt Cliff. And they graciously said, we'll sponsor it, we'll promote it, we'll put all the pictures up on for you. Everything you need to know about it, you can go online and look at it. So. <laughs> and one of the reasons we wanted to do this tonight was to get, I have a kickoff for May. You know, we do this big reunion every May, May 17th, or the Saturday after Mother's Day. So please go ahead and put it on your calendar now. Tell everybody we have big things planned. Um, we're not going to tell you what they are because it's going to be a big but anyway, it will be at the Cabin Center again this year and just mark off May 16th and May 17th. And we hope to see every restaurant fill between 5 and 8 o'clock and then at 7.30 or 8 we'll come up down to the Cabin and be with us. Y'all have fun tonight. That's what we want to do. Thanks, Okay. That's good. All right. Do you remember when the trivialities of today were a big deal? Uh, some of the things that we think are trivial today, they were a big deal back in the 50s, 60s. We're quick to dismiss something in this fast-paced society as kid stuff. And yet we're gathered here to remember the times when we were young, all of us, when we were kids. And it takes, in my opinion, it takes empathy and a lot of it 
to feel as we once did, just to backtrack and put ourselves in the mind of that 16, 17, 12, 13 year old, whatever age you may have been at that time. Uh, problems were magnified then. What seems trivial today really was a big deal in our lives. Our first dance, our first competition in sports, remember that. Well, Burks, Jones, some of those guys played basketball and you didn't want to look at the crowd the first time you went out and there was a, a crowd of people and you had to play in front of them. And you just felt like you wanted to occupy this little space and then eventually you felt a little bit more at ease and then you you were taking it all in before it was over with. But that first time was kind of like you were in a state of shock. And uh, I think that uh, remembering that, then we get a, we gain a little insight in our own kids today, you know, when uh, we're trying to understand them. Uh, if someone had no problems in those days, they were crazy. You know, we didn't separate the little uh, different things in psychology. Uh, schizophrenia, manic depressive, were terms for the future. Realizing these things are serious, I never make light of it. My mother suffered from a type of dementia. And even though it was comedy at times, uh, you know, you, you were sensitive to her. I mean, you know, anybody that's been around somebody with uh, dementia or whatever, you're sitting there for the first time and, uh, with your mother, and she says, Bo Gillespie, get out from under the house. You know? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but eventually, some of that passed, and she got her old self back and went on to live to the ripe old age of 89. You know, so we're thankful for that. I do wonder, however, if maybe we haven't gone overboard with advice from various sources. I turned on the TV. I don't know if you. I, I get up early. I'm going to sleep past five thirty most of the time. I'm used out there at five thirty. Uh, I turned on the TV early one Saturday morning, and you know the news didn't come on. News and weather didn't come on Saturday morning like it usually does. It's later on in the day. And so I began searching. I turned on TV early one Saturday morning, started pacing up and down with the remote. And here were some of the choices that, that you could find on TV. I want you to think in the back of your mind what you may have found on TV when you were a kid, if you had a TV yet. If you had a TV, not of us did I hate my butt was one. Maybe I missed something, but we didn't talk about those things, not on TV. Classic rock workout. Sorry, keep turning. To be announced. Uh, you know, the space so kind of cheap that time of day, you know. You can still, and uh, they couldn't occupy that space. Keep me in Face lift secrets. Now don't swarm around some of you. Uh, love making secrets. Heck, you need to get an education with those in the grocery store line today. You know, all you got to do is just pick one up while you're waiting in line. I hate my wrinkles. Girl, this is more... Have you noticed which gender this is directed toward more? Uh, the bra reinvented. I keep paging. Come on. Mommy needs to get herself off. Oh, queer. And I was looking for the weather channel. Okay? None of these were subjects we, we heard discussed, believe me. We also didn't see comedies uh, advertised on TV, things like this. So believe me when I say we were naive. We acted like we were worldly, but we weren't. We weren't worldly at all. Father's no, Father Knows Best was fine for TV. 
Robert Young sitting there with his pipe and a cardigan or smoking jacket and a daughter appears on the scene and he says, Yes, Princess, what is it? You remember that? You remember Robert Young? He always looked like the perfect father and they were the perfect family, right? Okay. The family was the model for America. And so she proceeds to tell him her problem. My dad and mom were working the second shift there uh, in the mill. Alright, so we kind of learned to work things out on our own. You know, we didn't have a... Uh, but you still, you had that model there on TV. Uh, today, there's uh, Dr. Oz is there to pass on health tips. Dr. Fields solves our problems along with Oprah. Jerry Springer will even let you fight it out on his show. And you can get it all worked out, any problems in Judge Judy's courtroom. You know. The lady makes, she makes more than anybody in show business I've heard. I uh, like $900,000 per session every time she gets on TV. And there are people who need it up, okay? In 1951 Greer, we did not have those luxuries. We didn't even have a TV at that time. Okay. If someone had a problem, we did like Crocodile Dundee, tell Dunk. Dunk tells someone else, and pretty soon the whole village knows, and it's not a problem any longer. That's what we did with the problems. I'd like to read you a little small thing on, uh, it's called the Tiny Cabin. Uh, I have a, a lady who was, uh, that I talked with years ago, and who's retired, sent me this, the tiny cabin. A social worker from a big...